In publications over the last 30 years, I have interpreted the architectural and cultural history of 17th and 18th century Polish wooden synagogues and their Jewish communities. Although both wooden and masonry synagogues were built throughout Eastern Europe, the wooden synagogues of the small towns or shtetls have been identified by most historians as distinctive and unique examples of a combined form of Eastern European and Jewish architecture. Before their almost total destruction by the Nazis, these structures were primarily recorded by Polish architectural historians, and it was the surviving documentation of one of these synagogues from the town of Gavorzhets, now in Ukraine, shown here, that I have focused my work. In this research, I have emphasized the synagogue wall paintings as a product of Jewish artistic traditions, as well as a form of Jewish liturgical art sponsored by the rabbinical and community establishments spanning many centuries and vast regions of Eastern Europe. Here I return to these wall paintings to re-examine their geographic and cultural development. Today, I will present a simple thesis about the geographic concentration of a group of wooden synagogues sharing a unified tradition of wall paintings, like the type shown in the Gavorzhets synagogue photographs on, on the right. While interior wall paintings have been recorded in wooden synagogues from throughout the entire former Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, shown in white. The oldest and most influential examples of these paintings come from a small group of 10 synagogues close to and closely related to the Kavorzhia synagogue. These are the red circles. Under Polish administration, this region was usually identified as Podolia, extending southeast from Lviv and along the Nesta River the Nyester River is also, also marks the historic boundary between Polish and Ottoman lands. During the period just before and during the construction and painting of the wooden synagogues, many towns in this region were actually ruled for short periods by Ottoman Turks between 1673 and 1699, about which I will make further mention. For your reference, I show a map of current national boundaries with a concentrated area of wooden synagogues located in current South Central Ukraine. My central hypothesis is that this cluster of 10 well-documented wooden synagogues formed a core area or concentrated hearth of Jewish liturgical art production. These 10 wooden synagogues contain the oldest and finest surviving artistic examples from the late 17th and 18th centuries, and I believe some of the finest examples of Jewish liturgical art ever produced. But whatever their artistic and liturgical imp uh, interpretation, these 10 synagogues have provided the primary documentation for interpreting the wall paintings of the Polish wooden synagogues that have been analyzed by scholars for the last 100 years. Previous Eastern European synagogue sources have often uncritically implied that the type of dense artistic wall paintings, like the kind shown here, were also typical of synagogues from throughout the entire Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. A review of the surviving documentation, however, reveals that most analysis and photographs originated from a relatively small area centered on the Podolian region. And while there are other examples of this of synagogues sharing this dense artistry, for example, the wooden synagogue in Mohelev um, in eastern Belarus, the surviving evidence as collected in Polish and Israeli sources and the Pichotka's many works are concentrated in south central Ukraine. Furthermore, outside the Podolian region, especially in synagogues from, from present Poland, Belarus, and Lithuania in the north portion of this map. The artistic traditions of synagogue art were far more dis diffuse, varied, and were generally produced in the late 18th and early 19th century. These later paintings frequently incorporated, incorporated secular themes and artistic motifs from contemporary Polish and foreign artistic sources. The synagogues from the Podolian region, however, contain the most complete examples of a standardized liturgical art 
focus, focusing on prayer text and ethical prescriptions set in elaborate artistic tablets or panels, most dating from, from about 1650 to 1800, uh, that were repeated with variations over wide areas of Eastern Europe. I interpret these text panels set in artistic architectural surrounds to be the purest example of an older strata of late medieval, probably Rhineland Ashkenazi uh, artistic tradition. These art forms are known to many of you from surviving medieval Hebrew illuminated manuscripts. Um, the, the bottom uh, tablet here from Gavorsja, it's, I think is almost a exact rep a representation of uh, panels that you'll see in, in some of the uh, Hebrew illuminated manuscripts. There are many examples like this. Oops, That's, I didn't want that. Just stay here. To assess this supposition from a slightly different perspective, consider that the art forms you see here could not have been created in, e in Eastern Europe after Jews arrived because they did not have enough time or cultural critical mass to create such a sophisticated art forms and compositional strategies from scratch. So it must have come from somewhere else, my best estimate, Ashkenazi communities. If this is true, the occurrence and concentration of a sophisticated form of liturgical art in a small, rather isolated southeastern region of the Polish Commonwealth generates interesting questions about the path of Jewish settlement, the importation and longevity of Ashkenazi art, artistic traditions, the necessary preconditions for the production of synagogue wall paintings, and the relationship of liturgy and synagogue art. To add another layer of intrigue about this artistic development, I show maps of Jewish population density in the 18th and 19th centuries, indicating that this synagogue artistic hearth was also one of the world's densest region, regions of Jewish settlement during and after the period of synagogue construction and wall paintings. Uh, map on the top uh, left is uh, middle of the 18th century, uh, bottom right map is a 19th century. Furthermore, according to the scholarship of Mer Moshe Rossman and Gershon Hunter, this same region was not exactly a backwater in the 18th century, but a newly thriving economic region of the Polish Jewish small town or shtetl. Furthermore, scholars of Hasidism also emphasize the region as a core or hotbed of initial Hasidic activity and development. The artistic liturgical uniformity of the documented wooden of the documented wall paintings from the Polish wooden synagogues between communities over vast areas and through time clearly indicates that they were not produced by isolated, peripheral, or radical elements, but mainstream rabbinical and institutional constituencies within their communities. I should add for those who are unfamiliar with the wall paintings traditions, that they were painted by professional guilds of Jewish artists. This unified architectural and artistic ensemble should therefore be seen as the dominant expression of a pre-Hasidic popular Judaism practiced within the Ashkenazic culture of the small towns of 17th and 18th century Poland. For many scholars I have interviewed, it is difficult to even envision a Jewish popular culture before the rise of Hasidism or before about 1800. But that is precisely what is required in order to fully appreciate the development of this small town synagogue art I have been interpreting. As an end point to this, um, widespread artistic development. I would also like to stress that this form of synagogue art declined rapidly in the latter half of the 18th century and its production was largely abandoned by 1800. Interestingly, although the painting tradition was not continued, the paintings themselves were not removed or painted over by their small town, often Hasidic communities, as similar forms of art was often removed in masonry synagogues from the larger towns. This decline in liturgical art roughly coincided with the rise of, of the Haskalah and Hasidic movements. In my research, I have also associated this abandonment in part to a realignment in the practices of popular worship in which a pre-Hasidic mode of worship 
where greater emphasis was placed on the visual aspect of prayer, was transformed to a post-Hasidic mode of worship, where the auditory aspects of prayer were emphasized to a much greater extent. Uh, just to be clear, these interpretations were borrowed uh, from the work and interviews with scholars such as uh, Elliot Wolfson, Moshe Dell, and Zev Grease. The wall paintings that blanket the prayer halls of 18th century Polish wooden synagogues defy traditional aesthetic and thematic categories, especially through the interweaving of different types and styles of Jewish and non-Jewish art. Two fundamental and contrasting types of sources dominate the complex artistic and thematic expression of, of synagogue wall paintings from the Podolia region. One, an older strata of Ashkenazic visual imagery closely related to the liturgical themes in the paintings, and two, a diverse group of what I would label cosmopolitan artistic sources reflective of the full range and history of Jewish multicultural diaspora experience. As shown in the diagram on the right, these diverse influences included, one, Sephardic Islamic sources, principally from Ottoman lands, two, Italian Baroque stylistic influences of the Polish and Ukrainian nobility and the Catholic Church, three, Ukrainian and Eastern European vernacular or folk decorative motifs combined with Jewish folk traditions, and four, international European decorative art sources generated by Polish and Ukrainian ruling magnates. magnates. Today, I would like to briefly emphasize the Islamic Sephardic influences on the wall paintings of the Podolian synagogues because of the geographic proximity of the Podolian region to Ottoman lands and the long history of Polish and Jewish travel and trade with the Ottomans. By the beginning of the 18th century, Ottoman Jewish communities had absorbed Islamic artistic traditions through more than 10 centuries of Islamic rule. These communities had fully absorbed aspects of the Islamic decor decorative arts so that fundamental similarities had developed between the form and decoration of synagogue and mosque, including interior walls that were entirely covered with intricate geometric patterns and scribal art. The influences of Sephardic communities drawing on Islamic artistic traditions account for some of the unique non-European aesthetic qualities of the Polish wooden synagogue paintings. For example, early observers consistently associated the wooden synagogue's dense wall paintings despite some similarities, similarities to regional folk paintings to oriental textiles, noting similarities in floral and ge geometric borders and backgrounds found in oriental carpets. A standard Islamic motif commonly found in the wall paintings is the arabesque, um, this uh, drawing on the, on the top right. Over time, the continuous usage of Arab, arabesque motifs united Sephardic and Islamic artistic traditions and is a vivid example of the fluidity of artistic borrowing within the development of synagogue art. Another specific is, is Islamic influence on the wall paintings of the synagogues was the influence and image of the Islamic Ottoman tent, bottom right here. Uh, the, the textile patterns and construction of such tents influenced the, decor the decoration of many wooden synagogues, including the shape and, and the painting of many rope and border motifs characteristic of the Ottoman tent. Based on these and many other Ottoman parallels, one might even describe the overall quality of the typical wooden synagogue wall paintings as significantly influenced by the art forms of Sephardic Islamic cultures, and particularly from Ottoman lands. Since this is a geography uh, uh, themed uh, conference, uh, this region of um, uh, uh, Southern Ukraine is actually closer to Istanbul than it is to the Rhineland communities you know, in distance. These Ottoman Sephardic influences should be seen as one contributing component in the culturally heterogeneous art forms of the wall paintings. In an overview of the many influence of these many influences, we must still conclude that Jewish artistic development before 1800 in these wall paintings remained relatively isolated from the centers of Gentile artistic development. And this isolation was especially true for the liturgical content of the wall paintings. 
Nevertheless, the artistic totality of the wooden synagogue paintings uh, simultaneously represented a quiet, selective distillation of many local and international Ukrainian, Polish, and Eastern European sources reflective of a unique multicultural Jewish cosmopolitanism. In a final assessment of the wall paintings from the Podolian region, I emphasize that the artistic development that I have investigated may or may not reflect deeper collective developments within the Jewish culture and, lit and liturgy of this era. In, in other words, the truth of Ashkenazi multicultural aesthetics may or may not be an accurate one-to-one -one reflection of the larger cultural or narrower, narrower liturgical development of, Jew of the Jewish communities in the early modern uh, era of, of Eastern Europe. In the case of the Polish wooden synagogue wall paintings, however, I believe that future scholarship will reveal that they were remarkably reflective summaries of the multicultural hybridity of their Eastern European Ashkenazic communities, communities both highly separated from and highly integrated within their Polish, Ukrainian, and Eastern European cultural context. Thank you.